Hey guys, um, Yang is back and uh, I put together a Chu Draco deck because uh, Dynamite Knight is uh, 2 now. I feel like the deck is um, could be viable. So, is additional copy of Dynamite Knight is a pretty big boost to the deck, I would say. So, let's go Monsters. We got 3 Ignis Heats. I feel like she's a very important one, so I, that's why I run it at 3. If you open a hand with like Ignis Heat and another Draco monster, you would tribute off one of your spell traps, summon this first, and if they activate something, we can chain that effect to grab another spell or trap, and then um, use the uh, use the grab a spell, I mean, and then use the Draco spell to summon the second monster. Thus, we can break boards with this card. So very good card. We got two Dynamite Knight. Yeah, I don't know why he stayed at one for so long, but he is very good. He is the most powerful one of them all since he can grab traps. Traps is the the best part of the True Draco deck is um the Apocalypse and the Return. Return is a call to haunt at every turn. And the Apocalypse just shrinks their attacks permanently by attack and defense permanently by one. So we got this one maiden. She's the least important one of the bunch, but I mean, one one of is fine. We got the spells. That's it for the monsters. We got six. We got one Dragonic Diagram. Searches the entire deck. One Terraforming. We got three Heritage. Heritage is the one that draws depending on how many types of True Draco cards get sent from Field to Grave to turn. If it's a mirror match, this um, will count for your opponent's True Draco cards too. Yeah, back in the day, that was uh, very relevant. And then we got Phoenix, Two Draco Phoenix, Disciples. Um, this card is um, it's like a Digusto Emerald for Two Draco cards. So it helps you recycle your Two Draco cards and draw one. Yeah, we got three Prosperity. I mean, not Prosperity, we don't have an extra deck. <laughs> we have three Pot of Duality. Two desires because desires are newly fresh at two, and then uh, demise. Carter demise because it's at one, the most broken draw spell ever made. And then change of heart because change of heart is legal now for some reason. I've never legally activated this card in my life before, but now it's possible. Seems pretty good because it's better than mind control since you can just take their monster and just tribute it for your true Draco monster. So. We're trying that out. Traps, we got two Draco Apocalypse. Oh, we gotta mention, I, I, I play 40 in this deck. So, Apocalypse. The two Draco Traps has another ability is um, they let you tribute summon on your opponent's turn. So you can sack off your spell or your trap to tribute summon and then your spell or trap will pop a spell or the trap will pop a monster. And we got the one return. I think this is the least important one out of the two Draco cards, but we still have to play one. And if it gets popped for some reason, you can just put it back with the Disciples. Then we got Floodgates, three Skill Drain. This is like Eldritch all over again. That's why I don't like these type of decks. I don't like playing against these type of decks. Like you probably see this deck a lot in the True Draco um, the Fusion Festival, I mean, or any festival when that matters. It just, um, Summon a monster, set four, and then flip Monarchs of Rup on you, which is the uh, additional copies of skill, skill Drain. And three Rivalry, because it's good in the meta right now, because of the Brave Engine and um, Despia. And this doesn't affect us at all, so, as everything is all Brave. Then we got three Strikes, just in case if they if we go second, if they change something to our Floodgate, we can strike them. And then I feel like this will either be in a side deck, so might as well just main it so we don't have to side it so we have three more space to put in the side deck then side deck we have the two amano wado the rock back in the day that's what he's called but basically you summon this no monster effect can be activated so you can summon this set your back row and then activate carter demise that was the play back in the day because they can't ash they can't do anything to you and uh, if they have a board full of negates too you can throw down this card to clean the board. Yeah, that's stupid.
But that was the play back in the day. Summon a mono and drop a Raigeki on them. But now Raigeki is at 3 2. Then we got 3 Dale Kunigun just in case if uh, Rivalry doesn't hurt them in their deck. Against like Sorso or something, we can put this in. And then um, D Barrier, in my opinion, is probably the most flexible and the best side deck card. We play this because uh, if we get blown out by like a Lightning Storm or a fe uh, Feather Duster, at least this card is chainable so we won't die that turn. And we have our own Feather Duster just in case we play like against a back row deck. And then three evenly matched too. This deck is very, very budget in my opinion. I don't know if it's better than LH, probably not, but I feel like it's it's probably viable. You might run into it in the, at regionals. So best prepare for it. Yeah, I, I don't like facing against these type of decks, just flip floodgates on you. But that's that's it for the deck guys. Um Hope you guys are not getting wrecked by in the Fusion Festival that's about to end. Well, please comment and um, you think what, what I need to change, if, if anything. Um, like the video and subscribe. And um, I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.